Welcome to another video of the R Shiny dashboard series. In this video, we want to create a R Shiny interactive bar chart using Reactive and Render. In the previous video, we plotted a chart using ggplot2 and this is what it looked like. We had the bar plot, we have the axis, water and sales, and then we are able to look at that information. But now, what we're going to do is we're going to now further expand this to create a dashboard such a way that if user selects a particular value in a drop down, he'll be able to look at that piece of information. So let's look at how it looks like in Excel pivot tables. So I have this particular chart with me and now I want to add a drop down like feature or a user selection feature which the user can select and then look at the chart from that perspective. So for this particular example, we're going to take sales rep as a selection criteria. What I can do is I can take sales rep to the filters area and now I can filter the sales representative and look at the chart in that particular perspective. So if I just say Amy, say okay, I'll be able to look at that information in this particular way. Similarly, if I select any other sales representative like Chuck, say okay, I'll be able to look at his information. So this is what we're trying to replicate within our shiny dashboard. Let's see how we can do that. Obviously, in this particular scenario, we're going to retain this particular part of it and also we're going to retain this part of it, but we're going to enclose them in reactive and render functions such that whenever the user changes the filter, this particular chart changes. For that, first we'll begin by putting a drop down here and that can be done by saying select input. And then I'm going to give an input and then I'm going to give an input ID and I'm going to say is equal to select underscore sales rep. Now this is the ID that will help us communicate between this place that will help us communicate between UI to server. And then I'm going to place a comma after that. Now, once I have given the input ID, now I need to basically give a comma and add the next part. That is the label. Now, the label is something that the user sees and he understands what that particular drop down does. So it's going to be like choose sales rep. And the last thing we need to give is a list of items that the user gets to select. In this case, it's going to be Amy, Bob, Chuck, and Doug. So I'm going to say comma, list, open the bracket, and I'm give, going to provide the values here. So I'll begin with Amy, comma, Bob, comma, Chuck, comma, Doug. So now I have all the four elements. Later in another video, we're going to see how we can get this particular list dynamically when the data is loaded rather than us typing it manually. But for this case, Let's focus on how we can use render and reactive to plot the chart dynamically. So once we have this, I'm just going to say save and then run the app and see what's happening. So as you can see, you got this sales representative with a selection here. You got this choose sales representative as the header and all of the elements that is this list elements, you got it here. And this is similar to what we have here except this chart is not ready to be shown yet. So let's see how we can plot the chart also. I want to close this. So to plot the chart, what we need to do is we need to enclose these two elements in reactive and render, right? So first we're going to enclose our summarization into a reactive data. So I'm going to say data and I'm going to enclose it within a reactive function. So once I've written the function, I'm just going to say enter. And now I'm just going to place this particular line of code as is within this reactive. So now that's placed inside, what we will need is the selection that the user inputs. For doing that, we need a requirement function and it's going to be something like this. The input that the user provides will be something like this. That is selection underscore sales rep. Remember, we have used the selection underscore sales rep. I'm using the same input here. So this particular input ID we provided, we can change whatever name we want to give it to, but ensure that it is uniquely identified 
in the top here right so we basically require this particular input here and now what we need to do is filter the data based on this particular input so what we're going to do is i'm just going to take this line of code that we have and since now that we have this requirement here we will now modify this particular line to filter the data for amy so before the group by i'm going to add another the pipe here i'm going to now filter the information by saying sales rep in input dollar select select underscore sales rep so basically what we did is we took our sales data and then we filtered it for sales representative that is selected by the user that is input dollar selection underscore sales representative and the rest of the information remains the same again we want to show the same information by quarter only addition we have is the filter of this information so basically whatever user selected here let's say if he selects amy it's going to go into this requirement function here and since this particular data summarizes the information for us what's going to happen is that whatever the user inputs here this particular data is going to get modified accordingly so now once we have this data we can then plot the same df and show the data only thing that is going to be an issue here is that this chart is going to be static it needs to change based on the user selection and so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to now put a render plot here which is going to be reacting to the reactive here so what we're going to do is say output dollar plot that's the same thing that we're going to give and now we're going to put this into a function called render plot open this bracket with curly and just enter and then i'm going to place the same thing as is within here right so once that is placed what we have now is a render plot so whenever there is a change here this render plot will refresh and show the chart again what i mean by that is if i change a value such as to bob the chart automatically refreshes right in the previous case it was going to show only a static chart so we had to put it into a render plot and now we have this reactive and render which will work hand in hand to filter the data based on user input and then show that particular chart here the only thing that we need to modify here now is that this df is now not going to be active anymore because we created a data from reactive and so what we need to do is we need to use this data instead of df here and since this is going to be a data within the ash shiny application using the reactive function we need to use the open close bracket or else this is not going to work now we have all the pieces in place now let's see if we can run this and get our output so oh, I'm getting an error here, which means I need to place a comma here and this is good to go. I'm going to just save it and run the app. Oh, sorry, it's giving an error. This is because I forgot a curly bracket here. So I'm just going to put the curly bracket and ensure it's placed here. Now this should be good. I think so. We don't require the comma here with the curly bracket. So if I save it and then run the app, it escape if there is in some error i'm just going to run it again and there is some error that is available here again let's see what that error is so if i expand this here it's saying this is causing an error so let's put this in one line and see how it's going to be working so i place this in one line it should be doing the magic if i say save and run it okay it's working now so now we can select bob and the chart will update for bob similarly for chuck and similarly for duck this is how we basically used reactive to take an input then filter the data and then pass it to the render plot and display the chart now reactive and render go hand in hand 
If there is any manipulation within the data, it passes it immediately to the render plot and it shows the latest information on that chart. So this is how we can create a shiny interactive bar chart using reactive and render. In the next video, we'll explore how we can get the list dynamically and also check out how we can create dependencies between one selection and other selection.